But thank you so much for having me on the webinar series. I've watched uh, with great interest over the last few months, and it's been a really good uh, series to sort of get into uh, as we've gone through the pandemic uh, over the last uh, eight months or so. I can't believe how long it's now actually been. So thank you so much. The Sports Explorer is such a new concept uh, and something very new that I've brought to, to market uh, and it's in its very early stages. So I really do appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to chat to you about it a little bit uh, today and share it with uh, the Spear community as well. Um, and it's very simple form. It's a, it's a travel platform that tells a story of a destination through sport and adventure. It's somewhere where you can visit for all of your travel, uh, sport and adventure needs. Um, it's not a platform where I claim to be an ultra athlete and run five marathons you know in five days and, and show off about that or uh, likewise I'm not claiming to be a Bear Grylls type character it is all about guides inspiration uh, tips on what the everyday person can do when they visit a destination and what adventures there are to do as well as uh, what sporting events uh, to attend uh, as well. And also telling the story of that destination through sport and adventure. So essentially it is, um, it's showcasing the best adventures to do when you travel to a, to, an, uh, to a destination. It's showcasing the best sporting events to go to and then also diving deep into that country's traditions and history uh, through sport and adventure, you know, for instance, uh, you know, little little stories like, for instance, the, the, the city of Po in southern France, first, uh, the first city to, to host a, a Grand Prix race, little things like that, little nuggets of, of storytelling like that, um, based on sport and adventure. So it's it's very exciting to have finally got it live, really based on, on YouTube content, on video content. That's something I've always loved doing, uh, that broadcasting, that element of storytelling through through broadcast and, and through video. And so the YouTube channel is vitally important. And then of course the, the writing and, and that creative mode of, of telling the story through through writing is is important as well. And that's what you get on, on the actual website. Great. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit later on about the YouTube and what that all means. Um, but let's just set the stage. What would you say are like the general classifications for sports, tourism, adventure, travel, and so on and so on. So how would you, what are, what are the different segments and, and categories? Yeah, I think when you look at sport, sport and adventure tourism, it, it really breaks down to, it's that niche, isn't it, of booking a holiday, booking a flight, uh, purely based on a sporting event that you want to attend, whether that's the US Open in New York, or if that's uh, Wimbledon in London, or if it's an AFL Grand Final in Melbourne. It's, it's purely based of, of, of getting your friends together or even solo travel or with your family and wanting to go to, a, to, an, exp to an experience and, and, and experience that with other people. It's, it's based on, on wanting to be a part of something. And I think that's something we've hugely missed in 2020 is, is sharing an experience with people around you. And we look forward to that coming back. And then there's the adventure side of it as well, where you want to maybe challenge yourself or you want to tick something off your bucket list. You know, that might be Everest Base Camp. It might be Kilimanjaro. Um, it might be cycling, you know, the, you know, the coast to coast cycle in the UK. So it's, it's, it's purely based on that, that ambition and that, that passion to, to book somewhere, not because you want to sit on a beach for five days or not because, of course, everyone loves sitting on a beach and maybe after you do what you've booked for, you can do that. But it's based on, on getting out there and seeing the world, but, but through that niche of sport uh, and, and adventure. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you have the so you have the active side and you have the passive side. Passive side is basically the consuming, and then the active side is more of being active and participating and so on. If we are looking at you know uh, just just maybe set a little bit also the stage of what you think the impact of the current pandemic was in general on on travel and sports tourism because I mean the same way usually we would be sitting in a studio setting and and do an interview or we do our little talk. Um, so on the business travel side, we can offset everything through maybe Zoom calls. But, uh, you know, when we're talking about sports and tourism and, and traveling, um, you know, what do you think the lust for travel is still there? And, and, and what do we do in times like today where we actually can travel or limitedly travel? Yeah, for, for sure. It, and it's a really fascinating point as well. I mean, pre-COVID, um, 
one of the fastest growing sectors of tourism was sports, was, was sports tourism. And, and I think post-COVID, once travel freely <clears throat> becomes more viable uh, once again, and of course, sporting events around the world start allowing fans back in, um, it's going to be bigger than ever because we have realised over the last few months how much we've missed that experience and missed sharing experiences with people as well. And uh, going back to the adventure side of things, miss getting outdoors. Um, I was watching a, 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 a documentary recently, and it was all about, as you touched on, airlines, and they were saying how their biggest competitor going forwards is going to be video conferencing uh, platforms, such as the one we're on uh, today. And I thought that was a really interesting point for the business sector, where a lot of businesses will look now and go, well, we can save a bit of money here. We don't have to all get together in a boardroom in London or Sydney or Melbourne or wherever it may be. We can actually just do it on, on our laptops whilst we're in the office or at home. But there's a difference of sport and, and adventure because, of course, it plays on our emotions and it plays on our passions to experience and it plays on our playful side, if you like. You know, it's away from work. And I think that's 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 really interesting and, and ticking that bucket list item off a, a, as well. And as I say, I think after what we've been through for 2020, and obviously it's, it's continuing uh, well into 2021 as well, but once things start to settle down, we're all going to want to go out and and maybe we've been putting things off for quite a while as well and that chance to actually now go you know what i'm not going to put this off anymore i'm going to go and do this i'm going to go to that sporting event uh because they're now you can you know fans can now go back to that or i'm going to go and climb that mountain because i've been saying you know i'm going to do it for years and over the last year that option's been taken away from me so to now have the options once we can I think the industry is going to grow. Sports tourism, the sector is going to grow massively once again, as it already was. Yeah, I think the only area that is still where we can do something like this would maybe the, the category of nostalgic travel, yeah, where you basically go somewhere and you, you visit an all-star museum or you go to your favorite sports venue. Because more and more, I mean, technology allows us now to put these online. And so you can do like your virtual tour, just like a, like, just like a museum. No, uh, you think that uh, the nostalgic nostalgic travel is something that will grow in the future as well as much as the active adventure travel. Uh, where do you see I, nostalgic travel go, uh, fitting in here? Yeah, I absolutely think so because if you're a sports fan, it, you, you you you're obsessed in a way. You want to be part of that experience, but you also want to know the history and you want to know you know what what, what the stories are from the, from the past. So as you say, museums and that's. That's what the Sports Explorer, um, from my side, I, I came up with the idea a few years ago and I was actually living in London, back in London at the time. And I was, I had a day off and I was, it was a lovely sunny day in London. I was walking around and I thought to myself, oh, the boat show's on today. Of course, the, the famous boat show on the River Thames. And I thought I'll go down, I'll get the tube across London and I'll go and, and, and watch some of that. And I'd never been to the boat show before. And uh, sorry, not the boat show, the boat race. And uh, I, I love the boat show as well in London. Uh, but the boat race on the River Thames, and I got down there and it, it was this fantastic sunny day in London and the banks of the Thames were packed full of people and there were various different, you know, fan parks, you know, with big screens and F&B outlets and things like that. And I thought to myself, this is fantastic, everyone coming together and watching this. And then I started to think, well, wouldn't it be great to have a platform that that literally guided you every step of how to get the best out of that experience. So when's the boat race going to happen? What time does it happen? Where are the best spots on the river to, to watch the boat race? What area is the start line? What area is the, is the finish line? What's the best pub to watch that race from? Or where are the fan parks? And this idea of the Sports Explorer started coming into my head. And then as I thought more and more about it, the idea of having a one-stop shop as a platform to go to as a sport or adventure and travel fan um, where you can have where you can find all these different elements of travel but based around sport and adventure became the sports explorer and so it's a platform where you would go to so let's say you're you're thinking of going to madrid for a city break you go to the sports explorer you'd search for madrid and everything you can do in that city uh, would would come up there and that would be everything from going to see Real Madrid or other football clubs or whatever it may be. It would be about hiking in, in the city or close to the city. But then, of course, museums as well. And if we're 
thinking about Spain, you know, I've been to the museum at Barcelona at the Camp Nou quite a few times and, and just opening up those avenues for people to make it very easy for you to go, you know, instead of finding different things on different platforms and different websites, actually just having a one stop shop to go, right, okay, I love sport. I can't wait to go to Madrid or Barcelona or wherever it may be, right, what can I do? Um, and then that's what the Sports Explorer is all about, is, is picking a destination either through sport and adventure or going for another reason. But whilst you're there, what can I do in, in that niche? Great. So uh, um, uh, you're becoming pretty much an influencer or an, an, an ambassador for a certain destination. Traditional fan packages and offerings at the moment, what do they include? And what makes the Sports Explorer a little bit different? I mean, because uh, obviously, I mean, it, it, there's been tons of, of, of blogs and segments on, on different platforms when you want to talk about a destination and food or a destination and, 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 and where to live and where to stay. But, uh, you know, the, these are the traditional packages. What is different with the Sports Explorer? What are you looking for to provide um, and to, to, to separate yourself a little bit more from, from these traditional travel blogs, if you want to call it like this? Well, I mean, with, with, with travel blogs, so when I, as I say, when I, when I was back in London, it, I really got quite obsessed with looking into the business of travel blogs. And it's taken me a few years. Well, it's taken a pandemic for me to actually sort of sit down and have the time and obviously working from home um, to, to, to look into it and, and launch a platform. As I say, it's, it's, it's in its very early stages at the moment, um, but obviously keen to talk about where I want it to go. And as you say, and as I touched on as well, just a moment ago, one of the things I've found is within the travel blog segment, travel bloggers have carved out a niche, whether it's traveling the world for, you know, there's a, there's a great travel blog by uh, a guy called Nomadic Matt, and he essentially tells you how to travel backpack and it's, you know, how to travel for under $20 a day around the world, that sort of content, which is great. And there's an audience for that. There's also another travel blog. Um, well, well, it started out as a travel blog by the points guy. And that's a travel blog all about travel, but based on the niche of collecting points and how best to use your points and how best to collect points for airlines and hotels. And I did loads of research and I was amazed to see that there wasn't really an independent travel blog based on sport and adventure, which then obviously got me thinking through my history and career experience of, of, of working in sports broadcasting, sports journalism, that there could be a, a gap here. And then, and then you start thinking, well, is it not a travel blog because there isn't an audience for it? But then you sort of start to delve deeper and think, well, hang on a minute, there is an audience for it because platforms like Lonely Planet have, have sport and adventure style content. Uh, and there's loads of, of websites out there which will do the five best hikes to do in this country or whatever it may be, but they're not specifically for sport and adventure. So it takes some digging to find them. Um, and also they're not, they're, they're, they're skimming the surface if, if you like, they're not going in depth. One of the things that inspired me this past eight months to, to focus on the UAE to begin with, obviously I didn't have a choice because we can't really travel, but, but over the years, you know, when you come to Dubai and the UAE, it's very easy to fall into that trap of, right, five-star hotel, I'll sit at the beach for a week. But in actual fact, if you drive a half an hour outside of town, there are some incredible adventures to go on. But it's very difficult to find a website that tells you exactly what to do and how to do it. And so you find yourself scraping around and picking up bits and, uh, of information here, but you're still a bit, it's still a bit sketchy in your head. And I think that's what the Sports Explorer for me has that inspiration of really pinpointing, right, this is how you do it. I went out and filmed uh, a piece yesterday uh, for this hike. And it, I really just pinned down on it. You know, I was, you, you drive an hour up this road, you go through a tunnel, straight after that tunnel, you turn right. Um, you know, really make it easy for people to do it, make it accessible uh, for people. And that's one thing I've struggled with, uh, not just here in the UAE, but around the world is, is finding that one-stop shop to go, right, I'm, gonna, I'm going to Dubai. I wouldn't mind going on a hike. Can you go hiking in Dubai? Let's have a look at the Sports Explorer. Oh, wow, yes, you can. And here's absolutely everything I need to know to go and do that. And that, for me, is the inspiration and, and, and the passion behind the project. 
Well, I followed you the last few weeks and the staycation type of information has been amazing. I mean, you've done the kayaking in the mangroves, you've done the hiking in Hatta. So there's been, I mean, after 20 years being in the UAE, there's been some spots that over the last few weeks you have just highlighted on, which I didn't even know. And that really yeah. gets you a little bit, uh, it gets, gets you going and, and inspires you to do something. I mean, even when you are not able to travel, but just to explore what's in your backyard. Do you think that this is something that maybe tourism departments and the local promoters offices should focus on more often now uh, to make sure that maybe their own residents are being engaged in what they have so because a lot of times you feel like that promotion advertising just goes to bring people to a destination but you know a lot of times your residents don't actually know what they have uh, outside of their doorsteps yeah i i, I absolutely agree and, and uh, like you say for me for many years it, you know it was hard to find things to do in the UAE or, 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 or appreciate what is on your doorstep. And that's not just here in the UAE, that's anywhere in the world, isn't it? I think you get quite complacent when you live somewhere and you dream about um, you dream about going somewhere else, but you forget about what's actually an hour up the road. And I think, yeah, tourism boards, again, it's, it's you know, tourism boards have a lot to try and cram in um, to their messaging, to a global audience, to attract people to come to that country or that city. And I think, this is where tourism boards can really make something work is them working alongside uh, and working with um, independent travel bloggers in their own niche. Um, I, I had a, a brief conversation with the tourism board here in Dubai a, a couple of weeks ago who had seen one of my videos showcasing uh, a kayaking experience here. And they said, Tom, this, this is great. Can, can we share this? And that was really positive for me because that's, that, that for me showed the tourism board here in Dubai appreciating that actually I'm going out and doing that experience and then communicating how you do that experience with, with the audience. Now, they might not necessarily have, have the space to really pin down into that much detail because they have this huge overarching message that, of course, they have to communicate. So, so I think for tourism boards to work with uh, independent travel bloggers in the various different niches is, is really important and a great way then, as you say, for those destinations to expand their reach and expand their, their messaging and expand what's on offer in that country. And I think that's very important, especially now as well with the, with the lust of, with the lust of travel, uh, you know, I, when you, when you told me you were on a flight and uh, you know, we, we delayed the, this webinar from yesterday to today, to, to, to today I was, or even I was like, Oh, Eric's on a plane. I can't remember what it's like to be on a plane. So, so, you know, the chance to be able to do it again freely uh, when we can, I'm already excited about and have been for a while. And I think that's not just me. That's, that's a lot of people around the world. Yes, yes. And what travel on the plane was a little bit different than uh, what I used to do in the past, but uh, it still got me from point A to point B. Um, so with the Sport Explorer, uh, you being the one trying to trying to educate us uh, on these great destinations, uh, is this a task that you're going to do on your own or are you going to invite other uh, bloggers, influencers and so on and so on to also contribute to the to the space? Because otherwise, I mean, this is this is a this is a lifetime project. What is your, what, <laughs> yes. what is your, what is your, what is your, what's the, I mean, for instance, like if somebody lives in, in a country and that has some influence or, or has some information or so on, do you invite, would you invite other bloggers and influencers or so on to contribute to, to what the Sport Explorer does? How's, how's your setup? How do we, what, what are, what are your plans there? Yeah, it's also an expensive, uh, expensive platform to run if I was to do it all on my own. Look, I think, I think, um, and I'll give a couple of examples of, of where my head's at. With the platform in these very early early days for now it is a it's a passion project but with the aims of turning it in, into a business and turn it into a profitable travel platform um over the, over the coming years uh but for now it is me on my own i i literally do everything i go out and self-film the content i edit the content i manage the social accounts and as i say the numbers are are still low we've only been li live for just a matter of weeks and you know, for a platform like YouTube, for instance, it is a long game. It's it's a long process. You know, you need to prove to YouTube uh, over a long period of time. You know, whether that be six months, a year, a little bit longer, that you're being consistent and you're uploading content regularly. It's content people are clicking on. It's content people are watching, and it's content that you know people want to want to consume. In the very early days and the last few weeks of the YouTube. Uh, site being live and the website i've actually been really really pleased at the numbers that 
have come in. Obviously, small numbers, but still pleased to look at the growth from day one and that first video to, I think, 10 videos later now. And to see that growth in these very, very early stages is, is really, really, um, really something that I find quite inspiring is inspiring and to, to move forward to that and to see where we can get with it. But you're quite right. There's no way I can, you know, go and showcase everything there is to do in every single country uh, over the next few years and, and then have this whole, you know, compiled content library. And it's as simple as that. There has to be strategies in place. And one of the biggest strategies, once we get to that point is is obviously UGC content uh, and working with other uh, content creators, working with other even journalists uh, who obviously I've, I've, you know, friends with around the world um, through my my career. And it's bringing that content together and having a having a platform to house it all on uh, various different series ideas for YouTube and, and not having me host everything. Of course, I, it's impossible for me to host everything. I think I will always maintain uh, a presence on the on the YouTube channel because I love doing it and I love to get out, travel, explore, adventure and sport. Um, but going forward, I think we'll pull in more people uh, to, to create that content for us. And that's a, that's a key aspect going forward. As we grow, we have to grow gradually at the moment. And the Points guy uh, who I mentioned earlier is a great example of this. Um, he started out by doing a, a blog on his own and he did it for a couple of years. And it was all about, as I say, how you get the best out of your points on credit cards or airlines, hotels. And that's the stage I'm at now. It's me on my own doing doing everything. And it's a passion project. And of course, it's very focused on the UAE at the moment because of travel restrictions. But going forwards, using annual leave from, from full-time employment and weekends and just starting to expand gradually and slowly. Um, the points guy, after a couple of years of doing the blog on his own, got some investment, started working with various different brands. And that website now is headquartered in Manhattan. It's a team of 20 to 30 people. And it's a really trusted resource of, of you know, what credit card I need to get to get miles, what airlines should I be traveling on, and everything you need to know about the travel industry, but based around the points, uh, the points niche. And I love that concept of, of building a sports explorer to having a small team, 15 or so potentially if we grow even further and 20 people and it's really a new source it's you know when tickets go on sale for a certain event it's breaking news and this is where you get your tickets and these are the hotels you need to stay in close to the event uh, and these are the adventures you do and it becomes this news resource if you like and that's the aim for me to get to that point but as you say at the moment it is just me but we have to build gradually and slowly. And at the moment, it's about building that foundation of an audience, which largely is obviously in the UAE. The other good thing for it at the moment is the UAE to travel here is reasonably easy. The borders are open. You can get tested at the airport when you arrive as a tourist. And therefore, tourism levels coming into Dubai, especially as we move into the winter months, uh, you know, probably going to be higher than most places in the world. And so to give people that resource of actually you're here, you're coming here, Here's what you can do is, a, I think, a really good foundation to begin with. Well, yeah, so and I experienced this one as well. So yesterday, just between the embassy, between the local airport and the destination airport, there's been very little communication in terms of documents. So luckily, I had all my documents ready. But, you know, there was just not one platform that allows you to actually tell you what you need to do. Um, there's even different information in terms of what hotels to stay in. If you go onto the website and you rely purely on that one, and then you arrived at the airport, it's a totally different list of hotels that you can actually stay in when you go into yeah. your quarantine. But regardless, yeah, I mean, a good ex just a point on that, a good example. I remember going to the European Championships in uh, in Ukraine in 2012, and and we booked our tickets from the UEFA website, so that was fine. But then. I remember thinking to myself on the UEFA website that I, I couldn't believe that there wasn't sort of some sort of, you know, these are the hotels to stay in, these are the hotels that are closest to this, you know, you've booked tickets for this game. So these are the hotels that are closest to that stadium or, you know, these are the other things you can do around that stadium. And, and so it's even though, you know, there's, a, there's so many travel blogs out there which are based on, you know, well, some of them, you know, are just someone holding a camera and it's, you know, it's, it, there's not much to it. There's not much storytelling going on. So I think if you tell the story of that sporting event, that adventure, together with that destination, 
is is a perfect place to be for you know if i look back if there was a sports explorer website available when i booked those tickets to go to the european championships and i went right i'm going to this game that's the stadium oh that's interesting about that stadium i didn't know that and also right these are the hotels within a five mile radius and i can walk there and it's you know that I would have absolutely loved that. And I think that's a driving force behind the Sports Explorer is, is from my experience of traveling to sporting events, what would I like to, to have to help me and guide me along the way? Yeah, great. Uh, and with your background from coming from the media side and using YouTube, what is one of the reasons for you to mainly using YouTube on this one? Uh, well, it's, I mean, I mean it's, yeah, it's, it's obviously the biggest video sharing platform there is globally. There's no, no uh, questioning that. It, you know, it's 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 uh, launched in the mid 2000s, but still growing rapidly. Uh, the figures for YouTube this year certainly have been astonishing because, of course, with people being stuck at home and looking for content to watch, I think a 20% increase in subscriptions and and what have you to various channels, travel tra channels, travel channels. That's hard to say. Travel channels doing exceptionally well because, of course, people are missing actually traveling themselves, so uh, taking in those experiences by watching other people's. Um, content. So YouTube for me is a, a really important tool, if you like. Um, and I've always wanted the Sports Explorer to be mainly based around that YouTube and that video content, which then is embedded into the website as well. So there's two avenues to explore the, the content, if you like. Um, and then social, you know, the social channels, Instagram, Facebook, leading, pushing people to those to those platforms. But yeah, video, video for me is just something I've always, 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 always loved doing. Uh, you know, I studied studied at, at school and college, and and loved getting out there and, and self filming and, and and scripting and 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 coming up with a story and then editing that story and and you know, it's just a process that I've always very much been in love with. So. So th that will definitely be a key part. And it's interesting as well when you look at YouTube and its growth and how people now consume content. It's less linear TV. It's more on demand uh, content with the likes of Amazon and Netflix. And a couple of shows that came out um, over the last few months whilst we have been indoors is on Netflix. I, the name of it, I, I forget the name of it, but it was essentially a series based on on sports that are traditional to a country. So they did a, an episode focusing on the Highland Games in Scotland. And I remember turning it on and, and being a bit like, oh, hang on a minute, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, but then of course realizing, well, actually Netflix have discovered there's an audience uh, for that, you know, which then obviously is great to see because it means there's an audience out there that you can target. And, and it's exactly that content as well that the Sports Explorer wants to do. It wants to tell the story of the world through sport and adventure. So the Highland Games, how did they come about? Where, you know, what, what are their beginnings? And, and why is it still so important to the country? And that's, you know, in countries all over the world, they'll have their little, their little sport, which is, you know, or, or various sports, which is traditional to those, to those countries. Another big show over the, over the, you know, last few months is Bear Grylls on Amazon, which is the world's toughest race, an endurance race in in um, in Fiji, and you know, be widely watched. And again, proving that that lust for travel, but adventure travel as well. And you know, that 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 race is is competed by by many by pros right down to to amateurs. And it's one of those I I you know I hadn't heard about it, but it's one of those where. Crikey, again, if there was a platform that I could go to and, oh, suddenly I didn't know about that, but this is world's toughest race in Fiji to do, uh, call up a few friends. Do you fancy this? You know, we, that would be a great week. <clears throat> so so having that resource to, to find out that information and discover that information, I think it's really important. So for, for tourism boards, would it be, uh, would you uh, and, and encourage having more micro-influencers rather than throwing ads on television? Uh, yeah. What's the trend? Where are we going with all of this? Yeah, I think I think micro influence is, is a really interesting way of, of doing things. I, I, I think, like I said, like I said before, I think if if I, this is what this is what I love about travel blogs, you're building a connection, you're building a community, you're you're becoming somebody's friend. Uh, my career started in radio and it was hammered into us when we were broadcasting in radio that it's you're talking to one person, you're not talking to a huge audience um you are but you need to direct it to, to to one person you need to become someone's friend whether that's in their car or a home and that's always stayed with me i want to you want to build that connection uh where someone feels like they know you they want you know they're inspired by what you're doing and i think that's where the micro influencer sort of um theme comes into it you know it's all very you know i often sometimes think about the sports explorer and almost 
to someone who asked me about it, I'll say, well, you know, Lonely Planet, I'd love it to get to that sort of stage, but it is all based around sport and adventure. And that would be brilliant. But I think I, it always needs to retain that connection to, to an audience uh, to, and to each individual person in that audience as well. Um, micro influencing as well is, is when you have that connection, people trust people trust what you're doing. They trust what you're telling them. They trust the storytelling. And I think that's really important for tourism boards because uh, and, you know, other, other websites as well. A big thing for me to, to grow the likes of the SEO on the website and the search engine, you know, how it's found, how the Sports Explorer is found is, is writing content for other platforms to drive people then to the site. And that's something that, that we need to, I need to start looking at doing over the next few months. Uh, Micro-influencing, a lot of these websites, you know, Lonely Planet's brilliant, but you don't know who's behind it. You don't know necessarily who's writing the article or, or what have you. I think that's where the micro influence comes in. You build that connection, you have that trust. And then if tourism boards tap into that and, and they know that, okay, you don't have, you know, you don't need to have 2 million followers, but if you have 30,000 followers or 40,000 people that watch one of your videos, but every single one of them is absolutely obsessed and that's exactly what the con content they wanted, then that's, that's really powerful for, for a tourism board to tap into that. Right. Yeah. And uh, it leads a little bit into the question that just came from uh, our friend Nadang Mavadi uh, and a question that I just wanted to throw out here as well. So what are the what are the elements for sports audiences you need to write about when you talk about a sports event? And uh, I would even go a little bit deeper. What are the key elements for sports tourists or so on when they decide on their travel? Is there something related to infrastructure? I mean, what, what, are, the, what are the key elements that, that you need to write about to get a new audience or get your audiences to be interested in what you're trying to talk about? Yeah, I think it's, it's really key. I think first and foremost, when it comes to a sporting event, and it's, it's, about, it's about introducing that sporting event to, to somebody. Um, a really good example, I, I always think, and I, I've loved this, and it, this story, this, this actual one is quite widely known, I think, but it, you get the idea of where I'm going. With, with attending Wimbledon at, uh, in London, the Wimbledon Championships, you often think, right, well, tickets are going to be expensive, or maybe I could get a day pass. Or, but I don't know, in terms of that, that element of you can actually camp outside uh, you know, the, the Wimbledon site, and, and queue up outside and, and camp overnight to get a ticket in the morning, which I think is superb. And that's a sort of, to introduce that element of Wimbledon to people that don't know, I think is really fascinating. Uh, and it's that, if you think of different sporting events around the world, you know, I went to the AFL Grand Final a few years ago in Melbourne, a traditionally very Australian sporting event. Um, but I was amazed that the day before that grand final, they do this huge parade through the city of Melbourne. And essentially the city shuts down and the streets are packed with thousands and thousands of people as the teams are driven through the city uh, on, on an open top bus or whatever it may be. And I didn't know about that. And I thought to myself, crikey, if I would bought tickets to the grand fi final and spent a lot of money on that and travel and what have you, I would I would be a bit annoyed if I'd missed all this pre you know, pre you know, preamble to the actual event the, the following day. So I think it's again it comes down to storytelling. It comes down to guiding people to exactly how best they can experience that sporting event. Um, what are the little what are the little nuances of that event where you go oh I didn't know that that's going to be amazing right I'm definitely going to go to that now. And I think that's what's really important about what the Sports Explorer is. It's telling that story of that event. Right. Yeah, uh, we are we're having about another five minutes here to go. So what's your big picture for the sports explorer looking at the industry? And again, what we're doing here today is the same thing. We're using Spear Asia to inform the industry about, uh, you know, what what the sport explorer is all about, how the industry can benefit. How would you bring now the industry in to 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 help and support the sport explorer or how can our industry in Asia benefit from the sport explorer if i'm a rights holder if i'm a if i'm an event organizer if i'm a tourism board or something like that where's where's your big picture for that yeah i think like i touched on it um a little bit earlier i often look at the likes of lonely planet and i especially look at websites like the point sky and i i i that's the aim that 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 would be a lonely planet obviously is a huge corporation uh the point sky i love 
I love it. What I love about both the Lonely Planet and, and Points Guy is the fact they started exactly how I've started. It's it's essentially Lonely Planet was was a couple backpacking and they wrote a book about it. Points Guy, as I said, was was um, you know one one man writing a blog and and then you know it caught on and the investment came in. I think for me, you know this this first year is all about building a foundation. It's going to be widely UAE content because I'm here and, and obviously travel being restricted. But once things start to become a little bit more open getting out there you know there's so much in this region alone saudi arabia's you know in recent years has started or even more recently the last year or so started their huge tourism drive obviously scuppered by by the pandemic but they'll come back as soon as we can travel properly again and that's that's a fascinating land for me to explore as you know you, we have preconceptions of, of saudi arabia and other countries around the world but to get in there and actually go well these hikes are pretty good or this kayaking or this you know this area here, you can do some wonderful things, or this sporting event that's happening here, which of course Saudi Arabia is doing a lot of at the moment. To actually get into that country and, and tell that story, I think it's fascinating. So at the moment, that's where I'm at. It's about building a foundation and building the beginnings of an audience. Um, then uh, a little bit further down the road, I think it's a case of looking at right. Let's let's start, you know, spreading our wings and 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 leaving the Middle East area and traveling further afield and telling more and more international stories. Um, and then essentially to get to a point where we have a really nice community, we're building a community, you know, people are coming to the site, the YouTube channel and being inspired and, you know, uh, and, and thinking to themselves, right, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing that. I, I'm going to put that on my list and, uh, and building a platform where it's a reliable, trusted resource of news, uh, you know, news for, for sporting events news for adventure you know when when can we climb everest base camp, base camp again and, and those sort of things that's 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 where we want to get to we want to we want uh, with that we want to work with tourism boards we want to we want to you know build those relationships i talk about building a foundation of an audience now but this first year is also about building building a relationship with tourism boards and sporting bodies and sporting events um I was watching the, the Sale GP uh, webinar last week and, and already my mind thinking, uh, Tim and I actually used to work in the same office in London at ITN and, and thinking I must drop Tim a, Tim a note and, and just start those conversations. And that's where we're at at the moment, beginning uh, and building foundations, beginning conversations and beginning that growth of an audience as well. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. I mean, somebody like uh, Sail GP, where it's all about the local promotion of a of a host city when they have their their legs in the different countries. They use uh, you know uh, their micro influencers to actually promoting this kind of a destination, not only through the eyes of of the actual race and the sporting competition, but everything what's around it. Now, you mentioned before, if it's the if it's the the, the the villages that are available, or you know, just all the activities that are, that come around. For instance, like a sailing event. Yeah. 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 I think going forwards, I mean, obviously, there's different. You know, I'd like to get to a point where there's different revenue streams for the sports explorer. It needs to be profitable. It needs to earn money. And there's various different avenues we can go down with that. You know, the likes of affiliate marketing. Because one of the things that will, you know, I'm certainly that's in my head looking to do is 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 you know, we do a big adventure, but then let's talk about the kit that we've used and. And then, of course, you know, push people to if you want to buy this, you know, kayak or whatever, these hiking boots, whatever it may be, then this is, you know, this is these are the links to, to go and get that sort of kit. And so that's, you know, affiliate marketing is going to be a huge part of, of, of the Sports Explorer. But then the other side of branded content and sponsored content, sponsored series, you know, there's various different series ideas um, in my head, which will work really well on the YouTube channel. And that's where maybe airlines come in or a hotel chain um, come in, you know, which just to get that brand exposure for them. Airlines, I think, are really going to have to work hard to, to get people traveling again and, and, and get people enjoying traveling again without any fear or any 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 sense of worry and so again it comes down to that micro influencer the lust for travel the lust for sport the lust for adventure um, and that's where then the sports explorer is going to look to to work with tourism boards and, and different airlines sporting bodies and what have you and through to, you know through the series for the for the youtube channel and through branded content etc cetera, etc cetera. so i mean if if you could ask if you asked me you know what would i hope to to come out of this 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 chat we've had today it would be to to you know um to start speaking to to people and 
and and sporting body uh, bodies, tourism boards, begin those conversations. Pick up, you know, if, if a couple of people on this call, um, you know, uh, followed the Instagram channel and subscribed to the YouTube channel and visited the website, that would be fantastic. And and you know, share contact details so we could say hello and, and I could go into more detail of, of what the Sports Explorer is and what the hopes are. That that would be fantastic. Great. The last question I have to ask you. So I mean, and all of this has to also be a little bit of fun. What's your top five destination bucket list uh, to wrap it up here today? And, and just give us a very quick why this would be definitely on your bucket list. Okay, you, you told me, you told me, yeah, you told me to come up with a bit, bit of a bucket list. So I think from, from the sports explorer aspect and angle, uh, from a city point of view, Melbourne, uh, I've been many times, I'm fascinated of how obsessed that city is with sport. And the fact that they have so many sporting events and so many iconic sporting venues within such a close proximity, I think is 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 superb. I was there last year and I watched the Boomers play the USA in the uh, in the basketball uh, at the Marvel Stadium, and it was it was a fantastic event. I've been to a grand final in the Melbourne Cup. So to tell that story of Melbourne as a sporting destination, I think is high on the list for me, uh, and also the adventures you can do with you know in and around the city. Uh, Costa Rica, I think, is is an amazing country. I've been lucky to go there once before, and I went to this amazing adventure-based hotel, and you had to whitewater raft to get to the hotel. That was the only way of getting there, uh, at which point I started worrying the fact that I had a laptop in my bag and was <laughs> worried about how they were going to keep dry, but the guys and the guys that take you down the river are fantastic. To showcase what you could do in that country, I think, would be would be superb as i mentioned saudi arabia um you know that would be fascinating i think to to really dive deep and explore that country through sport and adventure uh and a couple of others uh i mentioned it ever ever space camp uh, i think would be great to showcase not only do it for myself but showcase how you can do that and and, and share that um whole experience and really guide you through that that process of you know getting there and um and getting to base camp i think would be brilliant and the best tips of, of how to do it and antarctica is another one for me because i think what a what an amazing place that we have on our planet and um i read a great fact once where antarctica is actually the continent that has more sport played per capita than any, any other country in the world and that's simply because obviously there's not many people on antarctica at any one time you know, a few hundred, perhaps, you know, when they in, in the in the season of research and, and what have you in the summer season. And, and, and but they all all these facilities have sports halls and they play basketball and they play five side football together in these sports halls. So I thought that was a great fact. So to get down there and tell the story of Antarctica would be would be um, would be great. But and locally here in Dubai, like you mentioned, uh, Eric, you know, you, you've found things on the Sports Explorer you didn't know about. It's telling the story of Jebel Jace is often referred to as the highest peak in the UAE. And, and even tourism boards and, and other websites say, oh, it's the highest peak in the UAE. It's not actually the highest peak in the UAE because the peak is actually next door in neighboring Oman. And so the, the highest point you can get to is referred to the highest public point when you actually you climb up the mountain thinking, oh, I'm going to get to the highest peak in the UAE. And then you get to this point where you can't go any further. And there's a sign saying the highest public point in, in the UAE. It's not the peak, it's the highest public point. And, and telling that story of why that's the case uh, was something that I really enjoyed and I did a few weeks ago in the videos on, on the channel now. So, so there's, there's lots to explore and there's lots of little stories like that, which I think um, need to be told. Great. And uh, I will add uh, Indonesia to the bucket list for very selfish reasons. And uh, maybe there's something that we can do because, as we know, that the under-20 FIFA World Cup is going to be hosted there in May. And, uh, you know, Indonesia is an unbelievable, incredible country from, yeah. the, from, from, from the Bali well, to the Jakarta. Yeah. So there's a lot of sport, a lot of stuff happening. So Indonesia... So, I mean, South, Southeast Asia is, is somewhere that I want to spend a lot of time uh, with the Sports Explorer. I sailed once from Hong Kong to Vietnam as part of my, my role with Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing. And... And I spent some time in, in Vietnam and I've, I've spent time in Thailand, obviously, many times visited uh, Southeast Asia with, with Spear, uh, but also on holidays and what have you. And I think it's just an endless amount of content, an endless amount of storytelling, an endless amount of creating content that is, inspires and, and promoting those countries through sport and adventure. You know, I've been to Thailand a few times and done some amazing adventures. So, so to go to go back and work with tourism boards and, and really build a, a nice content library and tell the story, I think would be fantastic. Yeah. 
Super. Tom, it's been, time has been flying, unbelievable. We wanted to do half an hour, then 45 minutes, and I think we could fill a couple hours here. Uh, it's been great. Thank you very much to have you on the show. I think the Sport Explorer is something amazing. So we're going to be on the lookout for what's going to happen uh, over the next few weeks and months uh, to come. Congratulations on that step. And, and again, thank you very much for you being on the show here today. Well, I, yeah, thank you, uh, Eric. It's, it's been a real pleasure to, to talk to you. And again, I said it at the start, but thank you so much for the opportunity. As I say, it's a very, very new new platform that I've built from scratch over the last uh, few months. But but the main thing for me at the moment is is getting in front of people and, and, and just introducing the platform. You know, there's a long way to go with it, but just at this very early stage, having the chance to introduce it to, to, to the Spear community has been wonderful. So I hope people enjoyed it. And um, yeah, please do reach out to me and uh, hope Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the content that, uh, that I'm producing. Thank you very much. Tom, have a great day. Stay safe. I let you know what's happening here with my football team over the next few days. And uh, uh, well, we're going to see you very soon in Dubai again. No? Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. You too.